here at AV Nightclub with Jason Bentley for the Electrospective event. That's right. Can you tell me a little bit about the event tonight, Jason? Yeah, well, it's um, it's the launch of Electrospective, which is uh, a whole initiative from EMI Records to uh, acknowledge the catalog and the history of electronic dance music, which goes back decades. And so... You know, first of all, it's a compilation release, but also there's a series of radio shows, documentaries, where I'll be uh, interviewing some pivotal figures in the scene, you know, some old, some new new jacks. And uh, it's just a way to, uh, to document the history. And I think we have a unique opportunity now that there's been such a, a surge in popularity in the music right now to, uh, to educate a little bit, to, to shed some light on the people that have really helped to make it possible. Yeah. I mean, everyone that I tell about this event and about this release is super excited. And when they hear 1958 electronic <laughs> through the today, it's, it's it, like it resonates with them. If you were to make a mixtape for someone that doesn't know too much about electronic, who would you put on this mixtape today? Well, I would have to start just from my own experience of, of where I got into the scene, which is really the late 80s, early 90s. Um, just as a, as a college student, uh, 89, 90, 91. But um, these were important years, you know, formative years for house music uh, coming out of Chicago and New mm -hmm. York and really blowing up first overseas. Sure. And so I would probably put some personal favorites like... Um, Ray's Break for Love oh, and wow. uh, Joe Smooth Promised Land and um, some Inner City. You know, for me, this was a whole alternative new underground music that, you know, I grew up on classic rock, you know, sure, the, me too, me the too. Who and Led Zeppelin and all that yeah. stuff. So discovering this world of, of underground dance music and electronic music was was a mind blower for me. Sure. So, um I think that's what's cool about talking to all these people in the documentary is it's an appreciation of the history of the music, but through their experience, right. you know, each person. So for me, making a mixtape would be, you know, the starting point would be like 1990, 92, 93. Mm. Um, but it's, you know, before you know it, you're looking back on a couple decades. Right. It's funny because you say 92, 93, and that's still like way back for some people. Yeah. I mean, they don't even think that electronic exists, let alone 1958, <laughs> 1992, which is nuts, right? That's true. You know, but there's a lot of people coming into it right now, and all they know is David Guetta and Skrillex, Skrillex and right. so that's what this is all about, is shining a light. You know, and we want to make it fun, and we want to throw parties, and we want to dance, and we, we can't forget, you know, the magic of the music. So it's not an attempt at being you know, real academic about it. But, right. you know, I think there there's definitely a story to be told. Sure. And one of the things you said both on stage and now, it, this is about culture, right? I mean, music is a thing that happens amongst people and it's a, the clothing's reflection of it and the way that people interact. I mean, yeah. tell me a little bit about what the culture is in this type of scene and how you think that's kind of reflective of of what we are as a time right now. Well, I think originally what was so exciting for me and, and my friends and what brought us together and what made me feel good about it is I think it it really just was a whole new way of, of interacting. It was like an adventure in music. Um, and it seemed like it was something that could change the world, you know? And um, like, it, the hip, like the hippies, <laughs> right? In a way, you know, I, I think it was that profound for us. You sure. know, we, we really felt like what we were doing, you know, um, the unity we were right. seeing through music um, was powerful, powerful stuff. And as that's grown and nowadays it's, it's really become pop. Right. And the danger with pop is that we lose sight of that core message, you know, the, the, the flame, the inspiration, because pop music is driven by, you know, big record sales, profits. They're trying to put a lot of people into big venues. Right. And when it's profit motive first, you know, I think that's at the expense of the, the magic and the promise of the movement. So I think part of educating is to show that there's real depth and there's culture here. You know, there's there's people that have dedicated their lives. There are artists. I mean, it, it just runs deep. And um, it's not just some fly by night. 
So um, when you get into it, I think if you dig a little deeper and you appreciate that there has been a lot of people contributing to, to this for many years. Sure. Um, as far as the culture, you know, I think the, the interesting thing about dance music culture is it's always forward thinking right. and it's always changing and always evolving. And so I'm just interested to see where it goes next. Right. You know, one of the things talking to people like Boys Noise and, and some of the newer kids, yeah. Steve Angelo of Swedish House Mafia, you know, this is a guy who's just turning 30 now so he has an appreciation of the history of it but I'm interested to see where they take it next right. you know that's that's what's exciting right. to me so it really is a continuum you know the underground the beautiful thing is it's always turning over it's always yeah. reinventing itself it contributes ideas to pop at the highest level right. but then it moves on and it turns over right. so uh, wherever it goes I'll be there sure no and then that's I think one of the most amazing things when you see it kind of in Infiltrate society when you yeah. when you when it starts first with the love and the connection and then yeah. it, and the people and then now Coachella has that electronic feel and Lollapalooza yeah. is starting to like get there and we were talking a little bit earlier about Decibel which is dedicated just to that and technology yeah yeah a lot of great festivals um, you know and and the festivals maintain the the experience that's sure. really important the in all this the, the most important thing you know everyone talks about the experience and you know as i see these shows going into places that i never expected they would like stable center or you know uh, arenas around the country and i just wonder like can they maintain that sort of experience for people right. when you have your ticket and you're meant to stay in your seat and you can't dance in the hall in the aisles I'm just wondering. I mean, I want it to thrive and I want it to do well, but I'm a little bit concerned about it going to that level. Um, but yeah, no, the festival experience is great. feels like there's more festivals than ever before. Perfect. More to go <laughs> so, to, more to yeah. play at. I'm loving it. More to live stream. So experience, culture, yeah. connection, communication. Yeah. Jason Bentley. That's what it's all about. Thank That's you. That's what it's sir. all about, man. Thank you so much. Right. Hey, this is Jason Bentley and you're watching Crave Online.